Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome you uh, back today. <laughs> Some of you are new this morning, and all of you feel like new. It's been so long since we've been together. So we're so thankful that we have this opportunity to gather together and to see you or we're, we're family. And we, we know there's so many who still can't be here with us because of, of the virus. Uh, and it's still not safe for them to come out. And that's okay. We want to encourage them. I would encourage you, you see people that can't be here, to take an extra effort to just reach out to them. Because you know how it, it feels to not be connected for so long and then for us to come back together and still not be able to do that. You know, make that effort this week to maybe connect with them a little bit and just say hello, tell them you miss them. You know that somebody's not here, uh, uh, do that. We, we appreciate that. It's just a way for us to continue to be connected. So thank you. We were hoping to be live this morning for the first time, and we're not. So it's still issues aren't worked out. We're working on that because people can't be here. But so we're just recording today. Um, just a couple of things. I um, lawyers told us we had to do this, so I'm doing this just to fill in. Okay. If you uh, if you break these rules, they're not rules. They're suggestions. If you break them, that's your choice. But we're telling you what. We've been told to recommend, okay? Everybody has freedom to, to, and rights to do what they want, but um, we do ask for, for limited to no contact with each other and for you to sit in family units. We know we already talked, some of you are um, already uh, contaminating each other. And so, um, you know, and if, if pews are filled there, um, you can you know, sit on the inside or outside. You can find a, a spot there be in if there's a somewhere that uh, isn't taken. Um, it leaves us with, I know, not as much room, or maybe, yeah, somebody can move in. We need a little space somewhere. Um, but we want you to know we're not requiring you to wear masks. They are recommended, especially when we're singing, because that is a time where more, uh, more likely for us to expel something that people can catch. Again, nobody, uh, there's no mask police or anything. Nobody's gonna come and make you wear them, but that's just a you know, suggestion. The science is back and forth. Some say it's worse, some say I don't think any of us really know. And so it's just a precaution to keep people safe. Um, when we dismiss, um, we will dismiss similarly to a wedding, where the back rows are gonna ask to leave first um, and, and to walk out. And we're doing that just so there's not some big glob of people as we leave right so that we're not close together so if you just wait for the back rows to leave first and when they leave we ask you not to stay in the foyer if you want to visit with people we ask you to do that outside it just allows people to be able to move and get out as a, in a safe manner also um, we, we there's lots of things that are going to be different right and they might be different next week too <laughs> as we figure out what works and doesn't work but uh, our offering, we're not gonna pass the plate. We've kind of gone back and forth on that, but the way we've marked up pews kind of has made that possible to walk, for somebody to walk back and forth. And plus, when they walk back and forth, even if they're holding their plate, they immediately violate your distance if you want it. So what we're trying this week is we've put offering plates in the back and the one in the front here. And so we ask when you see them there, that you put your offering in um, before, you come in after you leave, whenever you want, you want to do the middle of service, because you feel like to do that, do that. Um, they're there. But the, what we do ask is, if you put it in while you're leaving, that you have it ready before you get back there, so that you know we don't have to fidget in your purse or get in your wallet or you know, stop and take time to, to do that. So um, that'll be different today for those of you that have been here before, and it'll end differently today. And we'll get used to it. It'll, it'll feel normal, I'm sure, quickly. Um, so I, I think that's everything I'm supposed to say. So I got a list here. Most of all, we want you to be able to fellowship, to share your love, to do all that. We just ask for you to, to be as safe and responsible as you can while you do it. We are excited to be back together to be united again, but and things are going to be different. Today is going to look a lot different than what you're used to because we want it to be a celebration, and you'll see in Scripture what I kind of based it upon. But I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge that while we're together, while we've been apart, our nation has grown more divided perhaps than it ever has been ever before. 
And we started out this pandemic saying, hey, we're in this together. Hey, let's, let's take care of each other. And then quickly we devolved into arguing and fighting. We devolved into politics. And we started arguing about whether a virus is real or not, whether we should wear masks or not, what we should do and shouldn't do, whether businesses and churches should be open or closed. And we, we began to argue back and forth, and we grew divided. And then, last week happened. And when, when George Floyd was, was killed, we became even more divided as a nation. And there's more right now that's separating us than is uniting us. And now this division with, with racial injustice, which we can all agree what happened was tragic, was unjust, we're divided, I think, about what to do about that and what's next. And we've been divided by the politics of it, the riots, the looting, the, the protests, divided by things like race and other worldly labels and divisions that have been thrown upon us. Now, I don't have any answers for those problems. I'm not a scientist, so I don't know anything about viruses. I'm a, I'm a white man who's never experienced what it means to live as a black man in America, so I don't have any answers for any of that. I don't understand or comprehend, nor can I be dismissive of it. All I know is that I can acknowledge, and I should acknowledge, when I see something happen that is wrong. And I should acknowledge that no one should have to live in fear, not in America, not anywhere else in the world. I can only acknowledge that, that there is injustice in this world because of things like race. And we as God's people are called that when we see injustice, that we are to take a stand against it. When there is wrong in this world, that we are to say that is not how God intended it to be. And so all I can really do is humbly acknowledge that I am a part of the problem. See, a number of people have reached out to me in the last week and asked me, what are we as Christians supposed to do? Give me some wisdom. Give me some direction in my conversations or in my interactions. And a few people have said, aren't we as Christians just supposed to pray? Isn't that our obligation? When these things happen, we should pray about them. We should. we should pray about everything. Because prayer is powerful and effective. However, sometimes that becomes an excuse for us to not do anything. We just say, I'm just going to pray about it. And not only that, often I think our prayers are the wrong thing. Because our prayer becomes, and things like this, God changed them. God changed the people I don't agree with. God changed the people who did the wrong things. We should pray right now. But if our prayer right now doesn't begin and end with God change me, then we're praying the wrong thing, friends. Because if we are to change the injustice in this world, it has to start with us. Listen to this verse, Colossians chapter 3. Verse 10 and 11. Because this isn't what I think. I want you to hear what God thinks about this. Put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. In this new life, it doesn't matter if you're Jew or Gentile, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbaric, uncivilized, slave or free. Christ is all that matters and he lives in all of us. Now that's a beautiful and poetic way for us to think about God's kingdom. That in God's eyes, things like racial divides, economic divides, political divides, they don't exist. God says they don't matter. Now that's not the Apostle Paul being dismissive of things like race. It's him saying that God is building something new and different. That in every kingdom this world has ever built, things like race matter. But in God's kingdom, they don't. They are not determinants as to whether you get to be a part of it. God doesn't see us that way. But the most important part of that is this. We look at the very first words of those verses, verse 10. He says, put on your new nature. That we are to be changed. We are to be renewed into the image of the creator. That we are to become more like him. 
Even if today we would say, I would never do what rioters have done. I would never do what that police officer has done. It doesn't matter. We are part of a broken world, and we are part of broken kingdoms that have allowed and enabled these things to take place. So we have to put on a new nature. We should pray not for the world to change. We should pray for the change to come in ourselves. We should pray that every day we are formed more into the image of Jesus Christ. We should pray that our hearts are changed, and that we no longer harbor sinful thoughts and feelings that bring about these kind of injustices against those who should be our brothers and sisters. We, we should pray that our minds are changed so, so we don't think the way we've been trained or, or brought up, but that we begin to think the way that God thinks about one another. We should pray that our eyes are changed so that we see every single person in the world the way that God sees them. Not by color, not by country, not by political party, not by gender, not by whatever label the world has thrown on but that we should see each and every human being as a precious child of God created by Him, created in His image, loved by God so much that He gave His only begotten Son for them, worthy of the cost of the, Christ, uh, of the cross, and offered hope in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We all share that together. No matter what we think, no matter what we look like, no matter where we come from. Those truths should change us. So may our prayer today not be for the world to change. May our prayer be today that God would change us so that we, his people, his church, would change the world. Let's pray for that today. Let's thank God that he's brought us here, that we know he is here, and that he would, as we are coming together today, that he would work through us through his people, through his church, so that this nation and this world will become more united together as well. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you today that we know that you are here with us. We thank you for this opportunity to gather together in your name. We have taken that for granted for so long. And now we thank you that you brought us back together in this place. We ask now that your Holy Spirit would fill this place, that you would fill our hearts, that you would begin to work in us, that you would begin to move in us, that you would begin to change us. Because we ask for forgiveness for the times and the ways that we have contributed to the broken things of this world, to the sinful things of this world, to the things that have divided us as people. We pray that you would bring us together in a way that reflects you, in a way that reflects your goodness and grace. Not for our good and gain, but so that others might see it and come to hear the truth, that they are loved by the same Creator, no matter what they look like. That they are offered the same hope and salvation in Jesus Christ. We thank you for that hope today. We pray as you work to change in us, that we might change the world for you. We pray now that you speak to us through your word, that you soften our hearts and open our ears, that we might be ready to receive what you have for us. We pray that you would begin to work that change in our lives, even now, as we come to worship you. We pray all these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. <coughs> Amen. For a while, if you joined us um, on the, the services that we had recorded, since Easter, we've been looking at the prophet Jeremiah. And the prophet Jeremiah offered us passages, the call for repentance, that uh, passages of grief, passages of hope, because Jeremiah was writing to people who were in the middle of an exile, much like we were in the middle of quarantine. But those people don't stay in exile forever. They come back. And they come back to Jerusalem. In the books of Ezra and Nehemiah in the Old Testament are the history of how God's people come back and rebuild after they've been in quarantine. And in Nehemiah, uh, starting in chapter 8, they rebuilt the walls. Nehemiah comes back, he builds the walls, 
And then they all get to come back together just like we are today and they worship. Now, their first worship service lasted about a week. So we're not going to completely copy what they do, okay? <clears throat> but I do want to use those passages as our guide to look at what they did. To celebrate this morning, this fact that we've been able to come back together. And here's what Nehemiah 8, verse 1 says. In October, when the Israelites had settled in their towns, all the people assembled with a unified purpose at the square just inside the water gate. They asked Ezra the scribe to bring out the books of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given for Israel to obey. They bring out the word of God, and they read it for a week. Because they hadn't heard it. And they didn't know it. And all these things happen. Ezra begins to bring out the, the word of God, the scroll, and he opens it up. And he would praise God, and the people would shout, Amen, Amen, which means truly, truly. They were acknowledging that this was true. Everything they'd heard before in their lives wasn't. And finally, they were hearing truth. And they would fall on their faces and humbly worship. And then they would start to weep. And Nehemiah would stop the service. He would come out and he would say, Stop mourning. This is in verse. Uh, after verse 8, starting in verse 9, he says, stop mourning, stop crying. This is not a day of mourning. This is a day of joy. Verse 10 is where we get that phrase, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. We celebrate it today. But at the same time, we want, like them, to be reminded through the word of God of who he is. In fact, they're reading through it and they realize that they were in the middle of one of the feasts they were supposed to have been celebrating that they haven't celebrated in generations. And they said, stop. We're going to do what God says. And they start setting up and celebrate that feast. It says, for the first time the way it was supposed to since the days of Joshua. We want to celebrate like they did today. And we're going to do that by just focusing on His Word. Not from here and from me, but listening to the Word of God and praising God throughout it as we read it. So I want to begin today reading his word, and I want you just to listen to it as we read it, and let God speak to you through it, because we believe the word of God speaks to us. You don't need me to speak to you, we want God to speak to us. So I want you just to take a moment in silence, just to quiet the hearts, just 30 seconds, and then I'm going to read you God's word. And as I read God's word, I want you to listen to what it says about who God is. Listen, what praiseworthy attributes of God do you hear and what God's people express for him in this passage? Just listen and let God speak to your heart about that. What can we give God praise for what he's done here? Take 30 seconds, ready your hearts, and then hear from his word. Stand up and praise the Lord your God, for he lives from everlasting to everlasting. They prayed, may your glorious name be praised. May it be exalted above all blessing and praise. You alone are the Lord. You made the skies and the heavens and the stars. You made the earth and the seas and everything in them. You preserve them all. Even the angels of heaven worship you. You are the Lord God, who chose Abram and brought him from Ur of the Chaldeans and renamed him Abraham. When he had proved himself faithful, you made a covenant with him to give him and his descendants the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Jebusites, and Girgashites. And you have done what you promised, for you are always true to your words. You saw the misery of your ancestors in Egypt. You heard their cries from beside the Red Sea. You displayed miraculous signs and wonders against Pharaoh, his officials, and all his people. 
For you knew how arrogantly they were treating our ancestors. You have a glorious reputation that has never been forgotten. You divided the sea for your people so they could walk through on dry land, and then you hurled their enemies into the depths of the sea. They sank like stones beneath the mighty waters. You led our ancestors by a pillar of cloud during the day and a pillar of fire at night so that they could find their way. You came down to Mount Sinai and you spoke to them from heaven. You gave them regulations and instructions that were just and decrees and commands that were good. You instructed them concerning your holy Sabbath and you commanded them through Moses, your servant, to obey all your commands, decrees, and instructions. You gave them bread from heaven when they were hungry, water from the rock when they were thirsty. You commanded them to go and take possession of the land you had sworn to give them. So prayerfully, I want you to share what praiseworthy attributes of God that you hear from the prayers of those people. I want to encourage you now, just, just go and take a moment, give praise to God. One word, two words, or something that's true about who He is. Something that you need be, to be reminded of who He is and what He has done. Let's give praise to God this morning for who He is. What praiseworthy attributes of God do you want to give Him glory for today? Faithful. His love and time. He provides. Protector. We heard there of all the ways God delivered his people, Israel. I want you to take a moment now and just offer God a prayer and give him praise for how he's delivered you. Just fill in the blank of this prayerfully in your own heart. Just take 30 seconds and think of how you answer this. I praise you, Lord, because you have delivered me from. You've got praise and deliverance in your life. Thank you. 
I confess that I have refused to remember God and what God has done for me at this time, at this place, in this relationship. Where have you forgotten God? And you need to be reminded. Take a moment and let God speak to your heart about that today.
God has proven time and time again that he does not abandon us in our sin. His grace is great. He's full of forgiveness, grace, and mercy. He's full of all that you need from him. So because of that, what that means is that God is here and we can bring our requests to him. So what do you need today from the God who created you? From the God who calls you his child? From the God who keeps his promise? Who rescued you and freed you from slavery and your sin and now speaks to your heart? So prayerfully answer this today. Because you are good, God, I seek this from you today. God, because you were good, I seek this from you today. Take a moment and let God speak to your heart about what you really need from him today. Oh 
respond. You of all of us, we're making a solemn promise and putting it in writing on this sealed document on the names of the leaders, the Levites, the priests. The people heard of all that God had been, and they said, we need to hear today, right now, before we leave this place, recommit our lives, recommit our people, recommit ourselves to the God who's done all this for us. Chapter 10 is this list that they made of the laws that they need to keep, of how they need to keep the festivals, of how they need to make sure they don't mix with other cultures so they fall back into idolatry, of how they need to give to God what they promised to give to God. So today, what does all of this reminder of God's goodness and grace, what does it prompt you to commit to God? What are you ready to commit to obey? What connections are you ready to let go of so that you can come closer to God? What are you being called to give to God today that you have held back from Him? I want you to take this final moment in prayer and I just want you, whatever's held you back from God, whatever's kept you from receiving the fullness of His grace and love and joy and life, let it go. Give it up. Because He has more for you. And He wants you to find that in Him today. Commit to following Him and not following this world. Commit to being filled by Him and not by the things of this world. Let's recommit our hearts to God today. So that as we come together, as His people, we know that from this point forward, we're following in His steps, in His way, in His way. He's given us the guidance that's followed today. Just take a moment. Whatever you need to commit to God right now, whatever relationship, whatever problem, whatever struggle, whatever joy, whatever addiction, whatever sin, whatever you've brought here today that isn't of Him, that's kept you from Him, give it up. Let it go. And that's today. In view of all that God has done, let's make that promise and praise that from now on we will be hit to His love. Commit your hearts to Him today. Take a moment and pray and give to Him whatever you need to. Father God, we come as your people today. Recognizing that every person in this room was created by you and your image. Was created with the need for you and your salvation. And each and every one of us here has looked for that in something else. Maybe we are still right now. So in this moment... Give us the strength to let that go. Give us the strength to leave behind the sin, the brokenness, the addiction, the pain, the grief, the guilt, the worry, the depression, the anxiety, the fear, those things that have held us back. May we stop trying to find life in them. May we find life in you and in you alone. Give us the strength to let go today so that we can fully grab a hold of you and what you have for us. Pray these things in the powerful name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We're going to finish today with a song of praise. We, if, you, if you watched us on YouTube, you've heard this. If you didn't, you probably you might not have heard the song before. So it's a new one that we sang a few times in there. But we want to sing it today because the chorus says this, there's nothing better than you. God, there's nothing better than you. And that's what we're proclaiming here today, right? That in light of all that God has done for us, in light of His goodness and grace, that there is nothing in this world that can do for us what He's done. That there's nothing better than Him. So let this be the prayer of our hearts today as we sing this. If you don't know it, just read the words and may they be your prayer this morning. Of course, especially, is pretty simple to follow along. 
But let's t today as God's people proclaim that God, there's no one and nothing
in this world that we can find that can do for us what you can. There's nothing better than you. We thank you for all that you've done. We thank you for this opportunity to come back together and praise you. We leave here today as your people, recommitting our hearts and lives to you, and ready to change the world because of the change you've made in us. Pray all these things today in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 We're going to keep playing, okay? And you guys can start leaving in the back and dismiss. We don't want to be uncomfortable, so we're going to play. You can sing with us as you, as you stay there. You can talk while you're there. We're going to just keep praising God and saying that. But thank you for coming. Love you all. We'll see you next week.